Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And this video is going to be about uh, kind of a thought process and a workflow on a landscape and how I'm trying to be strategic about my edits and how I'm using both global and local edits to really refine the image and really essentially get perfect control over what I want the end result to be. So this is going to be a bit of a detailed kind of deeper dive on a landscape edit, talking about all those kind of things and how I'm using the tools and all that sort of stuff to really get the final result. Let me show you the image. This is Vesterhorn in I Iceland, and it was already beautiful conditions and to be clear it was already a bit of a dramatic uh, setting so um, there's drama inherent in the image but what I really want to do from an edit standpoint is of course balance out the light as is typical scenes like this the sky is going to be brighter than the foreground but I got that nice rock there I want to accentuate that as kind of an anchoring element in the foreground and what I want to do is just basically shape the light control the light make sure that I'm in charge and not just like have everything get done for me and it's a combination of global edits and local edits so so to give you a sneak peek, that's what the final result is. Very dramatic, very colorful, very vibrant. And um, I want to walk through everything that I do in order to get you from that spot to this spot, which is going to be my thought process, the tools, how I use them, all that sort of stuff. Let us uh, let me reset this and we'll get started. Okay, I've already gone ahead and done this stuff in Develop Raw. You can see here some really basic stuff. Smart contrast, highlights and shadows, a little bit of blacks. I did a slight curve in the, uh, the tone curve and I did a slight amount of temperature I made it a little bit bluer uh, but I also added a little bit of tint and a tiny bit of vibrance uh, I do temperature and tint every time really in uh, develop raw but I almost never use saturation and only use vibrance a little bit simply because I know that I'm generally not every time but generally going to be amping up colors in other tools later that could be toning that could be color balance you know color harmony it could be golden hour it could be a number of different things so I tend not to do a whole lot there simply because for me I'm stage setting with develop raw I'm getting my base image looking you know pretty good uh it still needs some work right but it's gone from that to that and i think it looks better and now i'm done with that and i want to pop into my next tool which is super contrast and actually there are spots in the skies let me remove those first okay develop raw and then erase to get rid of the spots and now i've um, gone ahead and made my adjustments here in super contrast for this tool for me so two things uh the first one is develop raw is of course a global tool it is un you cannot mask develop raw you can mask subsequent uses of develop and we're going to do that here in a few minutes. Super contrast could be masked, but I tend to use it as a global tool. So when I'm starting an edit, I'm looking at it globally and I'm looking at balancing the light. So I pretty much just about every single time I'll do develop raw and then super contrast, which for me is about its stage setting. I'm building the foundation. I talked about that in a recent video, but I'm looking at basically balancing out the light. And therefore to me, that's a global sort of thing. I'm thinking globally. Uh, and when I say global, I mean across the entire photo, which means I'm not being specific or targeted, which is another way of saying I'm not really masking. I'm just coming in and using a tool across the entire scene. The nice thing about super contrast is it is a global tool, but it divides it into the three different tonal areas, right? Highlights, midtones, and shadows. So it kind of gives you the ability to target specific areas if you want to. In this case, as you can see, I used all three of them. But if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after now. A little bit more done in the shadows, right? A higher number there, a little bit more negative on the balance to kind of lighten some of those shadows shadows, but that's what I'm doing. I'm balancing the light. And even though this tool targets specific areas, I still apply it across the entire photo. I start out with global edits. And in fact, I've still got a few more to do. I'm actually going to use Relight AI here and the brightness near, I go to uh, mid fifties. So like uh, actually maybe 57. And then I'm not going to mess with brightness far. I really feel like the distance is just totally fine, but the depth I do want to increase. And so I'm going to go fairly high. And for me, that's a pretty typical move with Relight AI. I'm basically, it's an adjustment gradient. I mean, that's just a way to look at it. Uh, but I'm basically dragging the brightness near and then I'm dragging the depth and the depth is going to move that further up into the photo. So basically I'm brightening the foreground. That's really what it is. Now you could also do that with develop and just mask it in with a linear mask. And I do that quite often as well. I just thought I'd use Relight AI because I don't really talk about it a whole lot. And it's really good for that kind of thing. In my opinion, that's how I use it most of the time when I do use it. I just don't use it all the time, but it's not really a global tool. Well, I'm, let me phrase that. It's designed to be used either for, for the distance, uh, the distant, the background, if you will, or the foreground, right, near or far. Um, I'm just using it near, so foreground. So it's kind of being, again, used kind of like a local tool because I'm just doing the foreground. I'm, I'm still at zero in the background, but um, it's technically a global tool. I hope that makes sense. It might sound a little confusing, but I think you know what I'm saying. But if you look at the image before, there's Relight AI before, and there it is now, kind of brightened up that foreground area. And now that I've finished that, um, I'm going to go into Structure AI, and I don't do this 
this a lot, but I'm actually going to apply this one globally because I really like how it amps up the drama. I mean, that does a lot. I'll often not apply Structure AI to skies, but if you have really interesting, almost already structured skies, the Structure AI does a good job of making them look kind of uh, like more intense and more dramatic. So if you look at the before, a little softer, a little smoother, almost long exposure a little bit, and now they look a little bit more stormy and dramatic. So clouds can look nice with Structure AI, just don't overdo it. 52 is kind of high, but with this sky, I feel like I'm getting away with it uh, again. I'm going for a little bit of a drama. So that, again, is a global uh, edit, meaning applying across the entire photo. I'm actually going to come in with Accent AI, and this is something I recommend using uh, only sparingly, and I'm going to go to 10 here, and I'm going to use it globally. I've used it a lot, and I tend to use it a lot in two ways. The first way is late in my edit, and this is not particularly late in my edit, and the second way is with a mask of some sort, like maybe a radial uh, mask. I like to do that for targeting specific areas. But here I went really low, like 10, and I just applied it across the entire photo. So, you know, I offer all these suggestions and then sometimes I do something that's slightly counter to what I talk about uh, in other videos, and that's okay. Editing is a fluid thing. There are no rules. You go by what looks good to your eye and what feels good and, and what you think suits the image. And in this case, 10 X and AI across the entire photo, Structure AI at 52 across the entire photo. I think they both look great being global in, the, uh, in that sense. And the last global tool I'm gonna use here is mystical and I'm just going to 25 and it, it's actually a really good tool for kind of massaging the light a little bit if you look at it there it is before and there it is now it adds a little bit of contrast and a little bit of I think it helps with a little bit of the depth in the photo and so I'm applying that globally and mystical is one that I would typically almost always apply across the entire photo simply because of what it does you wouldn't want like one part of the photo to get that shadowy kind of contrasty moody kind of look and the rest of it maybe not that might look kind of weird I don't know I've always pretty much used mystical globally. So those are my global edits. I've approached this photo, which looked like that, and I thought, I want to amp it up. I want to make it more dramatic. I want to do, you know, X, Y, and Z. Now I've gotten it to there, and honestly, you might would call that an edit doing nothing but these global edits. And if you're done and, and you're happy with it, then, you know, cool. It's your edit. You do whatever you want. In this case, I looked at it, and I thought, you know what I really want to do? I want to accentuate the light in the foreground a little bit, that rock sitting right there, kind of right in front of me. And this was like a 14 mil prime wide angle, and I was low and I got that rock right there and I wanted that big reflection. But I want to accentuate some of that and I want to accentuate the reflections of the uh, Vesterhorn uh, in the water there, that, that tiny little thin, you know, quarter inch of water or whatever it was. So this is where I'm entering my uh, my local adjustment phase. Now people say, hey, there's no local adjustment brush in Luminar. Well, sure there is, except for Develop Raw. Um, second time you use Develop and any other time and all these other tools, you can mask them. And a mask, and by definition local, you're masking something in. So um, I do typically global edits to kind of set the stage and then I come in with targeted edits or local edits to get you know to refine the light and that's what I'm talking about here so I'm gonna go in with a brush I'm gonna grab that uh, I'm in paint and I am gonna drop the strength to you know maybe about a 50 so in other words, not full strength. And I'm gonna come in and just paint this uh, adjustment that I'm gonna make. I haven't made it yet. I'm gonna get the mask in place first. I'm just gonna paint that here into the reflection and then go in and finalize how I want this reflection to look. Okay, so there's my mask. I think that looks fine. I'm gonna go back to the adjustments tab. And first thing I wanna do is brighten that exposure in the, uh, in the reflection. So I ended up going to about a 58. And then with smart contrast, I added, that's about a 28. And so if you look at the before, there's the reflection before and there's the reflection now. It pops quite a bit more. It is brighter, of course, but I've also added some contrast. Keeps it kind of feeling a little, uh, you know, intense, I guess is the, is the word. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a couple of other things there in that reflection. So I'm going to go into Mask Action Menu, and I'm going to click Copy. I'm going to close the Develop tool, and then I'm going to go into Accent AI, and I'm going to apply a little bit of that there as well. So I just go into Masking, and I click Paste. I've now got that same mask in place for this tool. And this time, I'm going to go to like low 40s, like 43. And if you look at that before and after, it just kind of pops that uh, that section, that, that reflection. And I'm going to do that again because I really want that reflection to stand out. So mask, mask actions, and paste. And then I go into the adjustments. And here I'm doing about a 30. And that just gives a little bit of crispy reflection. So there it is before and after. And now having done that, I don't want to over structure or overdo the structure just in the reflection and not uh, include some of that structure in the mountain. So I'm going to close structure AI, open it again, go into the masking menu. I've got to create a new mask now. So brush. And I'm going to drop the strength. Uh, I'm probably I'm not going to go 50. I might go maybe 60. And all I want to do is paint that here into the actual
actual mountain, not just the reflection. So uh, I was working on the reflection. I think I'm done with the reflection. I really like how that looks. But now I'm going to get my mask in place on the actual mountain and do a little bit of work there. Okay, so something like that looks good for my mask. I definitely recommend that you take your time, make small brush strokes, all those kind of things. I'm just kind of uh, doing this. I don't want to say in a hurry because I'm not really in a hurry because we're just hanging out. But um, I don't, I don't want to waste too much time. Um, I'm going to go to 55, which is fairly intense, uh, but um, it's a little bit higher strength and a little bit higher number. To me, uh, the reflection is not going to be quite as crisp as the actual thing and the thing being Vesterhorn here. So um, I'm a little bit higher over indexing on the actual mountain and a little bit less on the uh, the reflection in terms of structure. But I think that looks fine. I mean, if you look at it, there it is before and after. I think that looks good. And the overall reflection and the actual mountain, I think they look good. I, um, I didn't do the extra tools. I think I'd used uh, develop and then also Accent AI prior to using structure on the reflection. But on the actual one, I just use uh, structure. And then I want to do one other thing that I consider a local adjustment. And that is I'm going back into develop. I'm going to go back into masking and I'm going to go back into brush and I'm going to go strength of like, let's say 45. And what I want to do, and I talked about this early uh, at, in the beginning of the video, and that is I want to accentuate that rock that's right there in, for, in the foreground, right in front of me. In order to do that, I want to darken some of the areas around it is what it comes down to. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint around the reflection because I don't want the reflection to really get impacted, the reflection of the mountain. But I'm going to come in here and just paint a little bit around here. And I'm basically kind of outlining the reflection a little bit and just hitting some of this foreground with my brush. And all I want to do is uh, create a little bit more pop in the, in the rock that's sitting there. So I've done that. I go into my brush and I just want to darken that a little bit. And so as you can see, I'm basically just creating contrast, right? I'm just darkening that area so that the rock in that little section right there, that little pocket in front just stays a little bit brighter. I think something about like that, and if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is now, just shaping the light a little bit. It makes sense to slow, uh, go slow and really refine it. I could probably do a little bit finer job on the brushwork there, but I just wanted to point out that's a step that I like to take. Uh, it's basically dodge and burn, but I think it's better to do dodge and burn with develop than it is with the dodge and burn tool. This is my personal preference. And so there we go. I did global edits. And then I did local edits. And then when I come back around and I'm just about done, I like to come back and say, are there any other global edits I should do? And there are a couple that stick out to me. I started with global and then I focused on local and I'm going, I'm backing out again, looking at kind of the whole thing, if you will, and, and thinking about global edits. And these global edits are going to start here with the uh, with the color of the uh, the light hitting Vesterhorn. It, it's very yellow and I want it to be more orange. And the reason why is that that yellow to me is getting a little too close to being a green. Uh, it may not really look that way to you, but it, it looks a little bit like that to me. And so I'm just going to go with a little bit more of an orange kind of look and get that yellow. Because you notice on uh, the yellow slider right here, if you go to the right, it's getting green, right? And I don't want that. I, I definitely want it to be more in kind of the, uh, the orange area. So if you look at that before, there it is. Pretty yellow overall. I feel like a little bit of a green tint. And there it is now. And in fact, I'm going to go a little bit further uh, in my notes. I went to like negative 60 something. Thing. So there's that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go to saturation and I'm going to pull that down just slightly in the orange and the yellow. I don't want to overdo it. You'll notice that I haven't really done anything with saturation. I did a, a vibrance of five in the beginning of the video in develop raw. But since then, I haven't really been playing with colors. I don't think I've touched color. So there's something to be aware of when you're editing is that number one, it's already got a lot of color in the scene. So you don't really need to amp it up. But also number two, and this is the more important point, is that when you're playing with contrast and adjusting contrast in images, you're you're really gonna impact how the colors look because it just has an impact. And so that's another reason why I like to do so much of my light work first because it really does impact the color. If you do a bunch of color stuff right out of the gate and then start playing with contrast, those colors can get a bit wonky, right? They can get over the top. And this scene is ripe for over the top color. And in fact, you might think it's over the top now. Um, to me, it's just dramatic. Um, I like it, but it is fairly saturated. And you've been watching me edit it. I have not done anything to the color other than what I just did and the vibrance of five. So keep in mind all this light uh, management that I'm doing, all this adjustment to the light impacts contrast and will make the colors pop. So anyway, if you look at Vesterhorn and the reflection, there it is a bit more yellow and there it is now a bit more orange, a little tamer looking. I just think that looks a little bit better. And then the last thing I want to do is one more global edit and that's just really coming back around to develop. And I ended up going about a 20 or so, like low 20s um, on super, or excuse me, on smart contrast. 
and then the highlights come down just a tiny bit and the shadows go up just a tiny bit so maybe something about like that there it is before and there it is now you can see it gives a little bit of pop and also it kind of brightens up those uh, orangey yellows that are on Vesterhorn because again contrast makes the colors pop and so that's one of the things that I'm talking about so that's my full edit here my friends I wanted to point out a couple of things and that is number one start by looking at your photo like globally figuring out what kind of things you want to do to the photo and I, I typically not typically I always start with global edits which for me are develop raw and super contrast in this case I added relight AI structure AI accent AI and mystical globally but then you come back and you target your edits because assuming you want to refine that light and that there is more to do then I come back in this case I came back with uh, local edits for develop accent AI structure AI twice and then develop again just to refine the light and fix things and then I came back with global edits around color and develop so what I did is I took a photo that looked like that dramatic to start with a beautiful scene just incredibly fantastic I just loved it it was so fun uh, being there but there it is before and then this is after all those different steps and there's a lot of steps here but the point is I'm looking at it globally and then I'm kind of targeting specific things that I need to go fix and then I'm coming back and finishing it up with a slight uh, global adjustment here or there every photo is different just go based on the light the color whatever the feel or the mood is that you're trying to accentuate but I feel like I've really taken a photo that was kind of flat and although it was beautiful and dramatic and I feel like I've turned it into something that really just jumps off the screen and I didn't even saturate the colors uh, and in fact I took saturation down uh, around the oranges and if you wanted to maybe it's a little bit too blue for you in some cases just go into color pull that saturation down you have all that power and control here in Luminar Neo and so using global adjustments and local adjustments together give you the power to really control the light and get the perfect final result that you uh, perhaps love and, and I love this one so that's how it went today my friends I hope you found this helpful walking through my thought process and that sort of thing and if you did check out that video where I dive into some similar ideas in depth thanks for watching I'll be back soon with another video you guys take care and until then adios